Good evening. Welcome to Studio 10 Talks. I'm Patrick Cassidy. I'm the artistic director of Studio 10. And I am just, I'm laughing hysterically inside and I'm laughing hysterically outside because the lead up to this show right now was the funniest thing that has ever happened in the history of this two and a half plus year show. Uh, <laughs> and thank God for our, our producer, uh, Miss Julie Garnier, because she is a technology wizard. And I'm gonna have her come on and explain to you what was so much fun for the last 15 minutes. Please welcome Miss Julie Garnier. Hi. <laughs> Jules, you are a wonderkin, a wonderkin. <laughs> so so well, let me just set up for the audience. So, you know, we usually prep this show. Julie and I do like, you know, an hour and a half to two hours on the agenda of the show. And, and of course, we want to know the artist and talk about all their specifics, which we are going to. Um, and and tonight was- We write the, the script thing. together. Right, go write a script together. We put it all together. And usually we do it with some days in advance. This time, because I was in Pittsburgh, just came back last night, uh, we didn't have a chance. So we did it here. We started early and stuff like that. And then our guest, who you're going to meet very shortly, um, didn't get the email that Julie usually sends, which has the link to StreamYard and all of the above. Take it from there, Jules. Well, with, with this piece of software that we're using called StreamYard, you, you can only really run it on Google Chrome as a browser on the internet. Right. You can't use it on Safari. And, um, and because our guest did not get the email, um, she didn't know she needed Google Chrome on her computer. Right. And so uh, we just spent the last, well, it was a quick one. Like oh she jumped God. on with 20 minutes to the show starting and we jumped on a Zoom, and, not on a Zoom, on the phone and talked her through how to download Chrome, which she did beautifully. beautifully. And then um, and then went, we manually typed in the StreamYard link for this particular show so she could join us uh, on the show. Oh, so geez. she's here. Yeah, I know. We're, Magic. But Jules, it's it's a testament to your ability to talk somebody through this because I would have signed off a long time ago. See you next week. I'm going to see Seth Rodesky. <laughs> <laughs> you are amazing, Julie Garnier, as you uh, always are. You do such a fantastic thanks. job. Um, thanks, well, let, let's let's bring on our contestant <laughs> and see and see how she does with technology. I will see you in a little while, Jules. Sounds good. Have a fun time. Thank I'm you. jealous Thank you get to spend so much time with this person. <laughs> I know, me too. Uh, our <laughs> guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, this woman has been dazzling Broadway audiences since winning a Tony Drama Desk Outer Critics Awards for her performance as a poison can develop a cold. Miss Adelaide. Uh, as one of Broadway's best loved leading ladies, her Broadway credits include Jerome Robbins Broadway, that was her first Tony nomination. Nick and Nora, Guys and Dolls, the Tony win. What's Wrong with This Picture, The King and I, Little Me, James Joyce's The Dead, Bells Are Ringing, her third Tony nomination. The Little Mermaid, A Catered Affair, number four Tony nomination, Annie Disaster. Her on-screen career is just as prolific, including her appearances on television in Spin City, Huff, Melissa and Joey, Drop Dead Diva, and most recently, Monarch. And in films, including It Had to Be You, Picture Perfect, The Last Dragon, Tinkerbell, and The Fairy Princess Rescue, and my personal favorite, oh, I love Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the master class herself, Miss Faith Prince. Hi, Faith. You're here. I can't believe it, because of you and Julie. <laughs> You were really? amazing. No, but but I mean, I, the fact is that I told you, you, I would never have been able to do what you did. She Honey, you. I'm telling you, my, my it got my heart going. Woo! All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It's so this good to rolling. see you. All right. So good to see you. How have you been? How's life? What's going on? Good, you know, uh, living in the middle, I called it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm living in the middle, Patrick. Right. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're all, I think we're all we're in, living in the middle, you know, just trying to stay well and yet not let everything control our lives and try to have fun in this world and share and give and, you know, family and all of that. You're in, you're in California, right? I am Sacramento, which has really been raining here. 
Oh, wow. Oh, you live in Sacramento. Wow. Uh -huh. Have you ever played the music circus? Um, yes, that's where I met my husband. You're he's 19, he's, yeah, 1987. Larry Lunetta. And you met Larry doing what show? Uh, on a clear day, you can see forever with Mr. Jack Jones, which I did a practically a whole act about it. Oh, my, there you are. There's your husband, and that's, that's your son, that's Henry. Your and he's a wonderful music producer, writer, and mixer. And he lives in Los Angeles. He's a great musician, too. Wow. So, okay, you so you did Clear Day. That's so funny. That, I, my, I I went on the road when my mother did that show. I, I, I and, my, and, my, and Sean, my brother Sean, at 17 years old, she did it for some, some summer stock production. He played Preston, like one of the- Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. so- Wow. Yeah, that, that show goes goes back a long time with us. So um, what did you like? Did you like working at, uh, at Sacramento Music Circle? I did. It was a tent when I worked at it, and it was really hot. No air conditioning. Now yeah. it's got a beautiful building with air conditioning, and um, it's amazing. You know, all the Broadway folk come out here. So. Oh, no, it's so great. My it's husband's a musical contractor. Oh, so for it now. Oh, and that's yeah, right. and plays trumpet and does all the Broadway shows. He goes to San Francisco and does things. So and does Glenn? Is Glenn still a big? Uh, Glenn Casal? Does he still have? Yeah, I think. Yeah, he's a part of it. Um, yeah, on and off, he directs things here. He's wonderful. Um, so let's Thanks. take. Let's go back a little bit because I, I, like I said, we, you know, we do an agenda and we, I do a lot of research and I've known you so much over the years, but I want to start. You were born in the South, yay? Grew up in yes, um, Augusta, Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, and most most people think I'm a New York um, Jewish gal, and actually, I was raised in Augusta. Me and Lawrence Fishburne, we always say that. Uh -huh. And um, uh, yeah, I'm deep South and Southern. Raised, raised and in, in, in Virginia. Virginia. Well, I was raised in Augusta and Virginia, but I was Southern Presbyterian. And I don't know how everybody thought I was a Jewish gal. I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. I, I've gotten to do so many wonderful roles. And um, I don't know how that happened. It was just funny. I, everybody, every, everybody, didn't, everybody, life. everybody, everybody um, didn't think I was a Jewish guy, but I grew up in Beverly Hills and I played at more bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs than anyone could ever drum. So I was playing drums. There you go. <laughs> Tell me about um, uh, your, so, okay. So not Jewish. And what do your parents do? Well, uh, my dad was a nuclear engineer oh. and um, worked for a company called Babcock and Wilcox. Mm -hmm. And my mother um, has been several things. She was a travel agent. She was a librarian for many years, really smart. And um, I think they were you know, I had a younger brother, Phil, who's since passed, but I think I just kind of overwhelmed them with my life. I mean, I was just very driven and excited mm -hmm. and they, they were just like, OK, what's happening? What are you doing? And I had good people in my life in the beginning helped me sort of get to find a school for musical theater. And um, his name was Carl Harris, and uh, he really thought I could do something in this business. I was going to be a music therapist. Really? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, when did you sort of develop a love or, or idea that I wanted to do the theater? Well, um, uh, it started when I was in first grade. I was in the talent show. And then in fifth grade, I went down with my friend Carol Camo to the Fine Arts Center to just hold her hand for auditioning for King and I as one of the kids. And they said, don't you want to sing something? And I said, no, I didn't really bring anything. And they said, you don't know any songs. And I said, well, I, I could do happy birthday. Uh -huh. And I did happy birthday with a lot of feeling and I got it. <laughs> Carol Camo did not. And she didn't speak to me for two weeks. So, and that sent you on your way. It did. There was something about the smell of that, theater, I just went, oh my God, I feel like I've been here before. And that really is kind of, that in the talent show was really, I just was, I remember being incredibly comfortable on stage. Mm. You, for whatever okay. reason. So you were, and nobody else in your family, right? You were like. Well, my, my dad could play piano by ear and he had, he had sort of been part of a, 
like a barbershop quartet. And he, he sang really well and he was very funny and told jokes. And he kind of like a vaudeville man. He, he was like five, six. And then my mom was five, eight and a half. Mm -hmm. I wrote this piece on them once called In One. It was about how they were terrific sort of vaudeville team, but mm -hmm. not not great to be married to each other. <laughs> that's not, that sounds like a lot of marriages in Hollywood. Uh -huh. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was sweet because I remembered a lot of fun things about them. They were very funny, and my mom could sing really well. She was a soprano in church, and oh. it was, you know, they would do this little vaudeville cane in the cane and hat kind of thing and she would do the hands behind him and it was very funny so I, I kind of just was a meld of the two of them yeah I've always you know I, I talk about that a lot I'm always amazed with someone who becomes as successful as someone like you who didn't have anyone else you know doing that because you know it was the exact opposite for me yeah it was everybody did it you just said right. you just assumed oh this is what you do because everybody's doing it so so like but when you have I guess, music background a little bit, you know, your father, your mom, and then you just get that. And then that's what you go. I'm going to go do this. I find that I just, that blows my yeah, mind. That was, yeah, it's pretty ballsy. Um, I think it's why I try to help so many people now sort of get what they need. That's, I'm, I'm really doing that a lot these days. And I, I'm going to talk to you about that. Because okay. It's one of my favorite I, I, things I, in the world. I've been well, so that, happy. That's why I said, you know, uh, and masterclass for self, because I have heard through the grapevine that your masterclass in terms of teaching, like audition and musical theater song and stuff is unbelievable. And I and I and I could probably put together a mass a, a bunch of people that would want to study with you, including I'd love to take your class. Oh, please. Yeah. It's, it's, it's my favorite thing. And I never I never even even imagined I would do it. But you know how like something when something settles in your soul and you go, oh, this is this is where I'm supposed to be. And I love performing. I still will always do it because it helps me sort of remember and keep my my skill set fresh and crafting uh, very fresh when I go to talk about it to somebody else. But yeah. um, and I like the balance of both. I, I wish I had found it sooner, but you know, you do it. I, I'm, I, I'm the same way. I'll, I'll tell you, but let me go back to, so you went to CCM. Yeah? I did. Which, and, and tell me, just tell me about, tell me who was in that program. Cause oh everybody is, anybody is graduated Wait. from that program. Forget, um, you know, let's start with, you know, Mark Walder, Tom Viola, uh, you know, uh, uh, oh my God, it's, I can't even, I mean, Jimmy Walton, um, yeah. you yeah. know, Bill Nolte, yeah. um, you know, just Beth McVeigh, uh, you know, Jason Graw, Vicki Lewis, uh, who? Who? you know, who? Jason yeah. <laughs> who? <laughs> said you'd say that. <laughs> We'll come. We'll come back to him. We'll get and and. But now, so when you were there, uh, is that when you really started to focus in on your voice? It, yes, yes. In fact, what I, I I tell my students is what I was at seventeen and what I was at twenty seven was very different. Wow. So you can really kind of grow into yourself, and that's why I say you know try just try taking in all the information and not judging yourself, and just keep keep. Keep that technique going because one day it just, it all makes sense and opens up, you know, right. but sometimes it doesn't happen right away for everybody. I, I call myself, you know, the, the turtle and the, the tortoise and the hare. I'm the tortoise. I'm, I'm slow and steady. I think if we, Julie, do we have a, do we have a photo of Faith at college at CCM? Look at that. <laughs> oh my God. Look at that. Who is, yeah. who is who is standing above you with the basket? Marilyn Hulesman. Marilyn she was playing Charlotte. She was really good too. And for some reason, Ward Baker, uh, who had directed the Fantastics on uh, I guess off Broadway. Yeah. And getting my act together and all that. He came in to be the guest director. And I had auditioned, this was Little Night Music. I had auditioned, I think, for Frederica or something like that. He gave me the part of Anne, and I wasn't even a soprano. Oh, <laughs> and I remember the dean coming up to me. He goes, "Faith, I have to say, you know, you doing this show is like Lucille Ball doing Lady Macbeth. You are hilarious." And I went, "Dean, I wasn't trying to be funny." 
So I'm not sure what that means, but I hear Madeline Kahn said the same thing when she was in college. People used to laugh at her and she was like, what is funny? I'm not trying to be funny. Right, right, right. I, 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 there's a great story I've, that I've heard that, that, that uh, Cheers, the, the television show, the comedy Cheers, tried to get forever Elaine Stritch to come do the show. And she wouldn't do it. And finally, they said, please come to the show. So they got her to come out to do the show. Finally, they spent all this money and got her. To, and they were doing the table read, sitcom, table read, producers, the network, everywhere there. And they were laughing at everything she said, every line, every moment. And finally, she turned to everybody. And she says, why are you laughing at things I have no intention of saying? <laughs> and they and they sent her back to New York. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, yeah, anyway. I've spent a couple of dressing rooms with her. She's quite, yeah, quite the piece of work. Yes, she was. Um, <laughs> so you made your Broadway debut in Jerome Robbins Broadway, right? Yes, finally, after 10 years of being in New York. Oh, were you really? Look at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So were you, you played Ma, Tessie? Who'd you play? Yeah, I played Ma and... Um, you know, still get jealous was my my soft shoe number with Jason Alexander, oh. and then I did Tessie. But my my favorite part was getting to dance with Robert LaFosse. Really? And on the town, he let me be one of the you know like the dancing girls and hanging off the sailor and everything. And I said, oh boy, you 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 are gunning for some trouble, Mr. Robin. <laughs> Me well, with Robert LaFosse, you know. Well, I now I'm t this is true. I've spoken to Jason Alexander, he was on the show. I've spoken to Bar Barbara Yeager, who was in the ensemble of that show. Oh, I love Charlotte, her. Charlotte Dumois, who was also on the show, and yeah. Jane, Jane Lanier. Tell me, I want to know the truth about this story. Tell me the story about the orchestra thing. Is this all true? Is it did it happen? Did no, it I wasn't there for that. That was actually, uh, for I believe the revival of West Side Story. Oh, it was. Well, I think, okay. I think so. It was. But is it, it, is it legendary? Is that it was true? that company. It wasn't Jerome Robbins. It wasn't. Okay. No. So no. what was it and, like? And he was backing up, and you know, he commanded a lot of respect, and he didn't like anybody to sort of, you know, jump in. And I'm, I'm assuming they were just like, oh my God, surely he's not going to fall, you know. And nobody said anything because, you know. He was he was a tough room, you know, and they didn't say anything. And he backed up right into the orchestra pit. So many years later, you're now doing, you know, Jerome Robbins Broadway. What was he like then? Um, he was an intense guy. I mean, it's funny. We have uh, we did this thing at I think it was Sardi's. They filmed it. And um, a bunch of us from the show were at a luncheon and talked about him. He was probably one of the most insecure people I've ever known in my life. And I mean that lovingly. And you just wouldn't think that a genius like that, but I guess that's why he was a genius. He really, um, he went beyond, you know, telling the story with his choreography. I mean, he, he just, he did his work and he crafted. I learned so much by being in his presence mm. and watching him with other people and how he worked and his storytelling. And there was just never any kind of focus that wasn't where he exactly thought it should be. He was wow. a master, wow. but he commanded a lot of respect. And most of the time it was, you know, holding the attention with him. And, you know, sometimes, some of us have, you know, ADD, a little, you know, go here, go there. And that's, you know, he just had no time for that. He wanted you to really focus in and everything. And, um, you know, sometimes he could he could be rough on people or he would just get, you know, sort of irritated. But I liked him very much. I mean, he and I had one sort of explosion and um, it turned out OK, though. I mean, he. You know, we'd been doing the show for five months. We'd rehearsed. I, I know you rehearsed forever, right? You rehearsed yeah. forever. And uh, he loved to end the day with the gimmick number. And we ran the scene and he started snapping his fingers. And I just looked at him and I went, what? And he went, no pause. And I went, yes, pause. It's yeah. funny. I think. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't know because we haven't had an audience for five months. I mean, I just snapped. <laughs> oh gosh. I don't know what happened to me. I just, you know, 
And it was funny because I thought maybe he was going to fire me. And then that night there was a party at Debbie Gravide's house. And um, first person I run into is him. And he goes, next time we have a row, could we talk about it? I said, <laughs> He goes, I've been upset all day. But oh. you know, he really treated me great after that. I mean, it, it, it was like a, I don't know, a test or a challenge. And it's not like I really speak up to people, but it really, it, it was like there was no freedom in, in sort of having a moment where you have something happen. You know, mm -hmm. he really liked to control it. And, you know, he and hired I'm sure, and I'm sure he was funny. So I just had that moment. And I'm sure he respected the heck out of your talent. You know, he did. Yeah. He really did. We really got on after that. And he came up to me in purchase and he goes, yeah, take the pause. It's funny. And uh -huh. I went, okay. But I'm wrong. Uh, okay. So here's my question. How does a show that has Joanna Gleason, Barry Bostwick, Christine Baranski, John Jellison, Deborah Monk, Chris Sarandon, and of course the incomparable Faith Prince, how does a show like that not run forever? Um, I'm talking about Nick, Nick and Nora, of course. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Um, I would say that one was more on Arthur Lawrence than anybody. Really? You know, well, think about it. Um, the thin, the thin man stories and the movies had been around forever and they picked this particular murder to happen, which I was the murder victim, Lorraine. And, it, you know, to make a musical about one of the pieces, I think is pretty difficult sort of situation. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, how all great things, even things that look great in the rehearsal room, and then it gets transferred and it doesn't make the transfer. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. But I would say it happens more than not. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? And Broadway, yeah, sure. And then that, and then that, hard to have a very a certifiable hit. And then that theater poster makes the Joe Allen's wall. <laughs> exactly. You know? I, I have a couple of them. So. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, well, let's get to the hit. So, okay, guys and dolls. So yes. you and I know everybody's asked you every single thing under the sun. I'll probably repeat it. So I and I saw it. I saw you. It was unbelievable. You and Nathan were magic. I, I, mm. I, and of course, Jerry Zachs, who, who I got to do assassins with. Uh, Jules, let's run this. Oh, there you are. There you are. Okay. So, Miss Adelaide. Uh, Jules, let's run this little clip, shall we? Take a look at this. In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a person can develop a cold. You can spray her wherever you figure the streptococcus. Shy from the hotel clerk, a person can develop a cold. And furthermore, just from stalling and stalling and stalling the wedding trip, a person can develop la grip, la grip, la post nasal drip with the wheezes and the sneezes and a sinus that's really a pimp. <laughs> from a of community property and a feeling she's getting too old. A person can develop a bad, bad <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I remember it so well. I mean, Faith, it's a remarkable performance. It's a remarkable, it was a, a remarkable performance then. It's a remarkable performance now. Well, it's hard to suck in Guys and Dolls. It really is. <laughs> no, no. I mean, a lot of it's there. But I I am proud that we sort of did, you know, a different kind of take on her. And and it's it's interesting. If you watch the video of Sumi with Vivian Blaine and Sam Levine, I think it is. Uh -huh. And then you watch the, um, I think we did it on The Tonight Show or something. And they filmed it it's really boy what a different adelaide mm -hmm. and a different nathan mm -hmm. speaking of which nathan uh nathan detroit obviously but uh nathan lane we had on the show i had him I, god i love nick did you talk did you love working with him oh he's a doll we're bonded at the hip yeah my favorite thing was to make him laugh on stage 
<laughs> my goal every night. Did it go back and forth? Because he's funny too. <laughs> oh, he's hilarious. But you know, he tests out the audience and I go, don't worry about them. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he is. He's amazing. No, we really, well, you know, that was just one of those experiences. It was incredible. I, I, I've asked this to several, uh, and I know it's probably the stupidest question in the world. Where do you keep your Tony Award? Um, actually, I have it in, um, I have an upstairs sort of living room with a bookcase, and I have it in there. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I, I asked it of Audra, of course, of her six. Oh, she said, God. Oh, they're turned over, and they're on the thing. And they're That's like, funny. Well, a long time, uh, it was in a box somewhere, and then I, I just have moved, and you know, pulled it out. So, um, so this, we have some fun on this show. Uh, we usually play this little game. Uh, everybody's played it. Uh, so it's, and I'm not, uh, do you like games? Um, maybe. <laughs> Let's okay, see. So this, one, this one's called, we usually call it remember the lyric. Okay. And oh. what it is usually, uh, the rules are usually I sing a lyric from a show that you did, from a song that you sang, and then you sing the lyric back to me. But in oh your, my God. No, no, no. But it, no, no. In your case, I didn't know any songs that you had sung. <laughs> so, so we're changing the game for just tonight, and we're calling it Remember the Lament. <laughs> so, I just want you to sing any portion, one little portion, one small portion for me of the lament. Okay. It says here, the average unmarried female, basically insecure, <laughs> due to some long frustration, may react with psychosomatic symptoms, <laughs> difficult to endure, affecting the upper respiratory tract, A poison can develop a gold. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. So I, I have been so blessed, and people have been so generous. I got to sing part of uh, uh, Wheeled, Wheels, of, Wheels of, on a Dream with Audra McDonald. I got to sing part of If I Loved You with, with Kelly O'Hara. I've oh. been, yeah. No, it's been. I, I got to sing the confrontation thing from Les Mis with Norm Lewis. <laughs> Because yeah. I've got, I've got you all. Yeah, what could we have done? We could have done something. We, you, you've never done on a clear day. I've never done it, but I, but yeah, I used to sing. Hear yeah, my voice where you are. I think that'd be a great role for you. Yeah, because yeah, if I get back, if I get out of the artistic, and career, you might remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jack Jones. <laughs> all right, so let's 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 chat about. Um, our favorite leading man. Yours, mine, Jason Groff. We Jason, have to talk about Jason Groff. I know, we do. You I know, I played him. opposite him in drag once. He said, How is that? He said, he, he said, I looked like Shirley Jones on steroids. <laughs> what did you guys do together? We did a, we did, I've worked with him several times. He's been Marcellus to my Harold Hill twice. Oh my God. He, but we did an original show called Duets, which was all the sort of male duets of the theater interpreted yes. by Mr. How Gold. did I miss that? It was really great. We did a workshop of it at the at the um, Falcon Theater, which I guess is the Gary Marshall Theater now. But it was it's it was fantastic working with him. We, we had the greatest time. But I saw you officiate his wedding to Glenn, oh and I have to tell you, other than my own wedding. The best wedding I've ever been to. In fact, in many ways, it was even better than my wedding because the performers were unbelievable. Starting with you, how did you enjoy that? Oh, I, 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 very few times in my life have I felt called to do things specifically, and I had officiated one other wedding of somebody that actually I kind of talked to her and it helped her sort of dream about what she wanted, and she went back to Boston and got it and really had done a lot of the work that we had talked about. And so they asked me to officiate their wedding, my friend Margo. Um, but um, 
when Jason asked me, I was like cranky because I went, he goes, I have something to ask you. And I went, oh, God, you're not going to ask me to sing at your wedding, are you? And, and he went, no, how about officiate it? And I went, well, you know, it's not my first time. Oh, there you are. <laughs> we had the best time. Oh, my God. I was really, I was, it, it was something I've never, I was not scared. I was not um, I spent the whole summer sort of gathering material. He knew kind of some of what we we should do. It just, it was a sheer and utter joy of my life to do that. And everybody who got to experience it. You know, I mean, we know who sang. I mean, I mean, Liz sang and, and Julie sang. Julie sang and Brent and, Hill sang. And, and Susan Graham. So, oh, Susan Graham. And Vicki Lewis sang. And Vicki Lewis. And I, and I sang... With with my son, we did um, Sadder But Wiser Girl, and then Jason joined us. It was a trio. It was, but I mean, and that was unbelievable. The but the but just just the essence. First of all, you know, you put you up there and Jason and Glenn. Who would have? I would never knew Glenn was so Glenn, funny. Did He's you so hear him sing? Oh my God! Yeah, I love the two of them so much. I do too. They were here. They were here in Nashville. You know, I had Jason here, and I have to get you two to come here to do our cabaret series because we I'd do a cabaret. That. I'd love Maybe to have the both of you. But we have the best time. Oh my God, we have the best time. What, you, what's your show called? The Prince and the Showboy. Actually, that's the old title. Now it's you and me, but mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that appropriate for him? I wanted to title it "You and Me, but Mostly We." And he got. And he said, "Honey, come on! It's the two of us, you and me, but mostly me." <laughs> so he won. Well, we're we're gonna figure out that we have to bring the two of you here. He's he's been here. He, we had a we had a great time, and Glenn came too, and I got to see Glenn. And oh, I just my Glennie. Is, they call is, me the sister wife. Is Faith Prince your full real name? It is. It is. Uh, and so. And, and by the way, did anybody or everybody say, hey, are you related to Hal Prince? Or oh, Dave all the time. They thought I was his daughter. I've yeah. had people like, you know, come out of the, I can't believe you found that picture. That's amazing. Look at that. That's that's Daisy Prince. Yeah, the, who directed my, my first act, actually. Oh, did she? And she's Hal's real daughter, of course. Yes. And Hal, and then the, uh, and the daughter that he never had, which is you. And he said, let's just say yes from now on when they say, are you my daughter? He said, I'm just going to say yes. And I go, well, then I'll say yes, too. Did you ever get to work with him? Um, I did um, a workshop of Bounce. Oh, my God. I, I, which was Wise Guys. Yeah, one of the incarnations of that. And uh, so I did, I did get to work with him. He was wonderful. I, I, he was a very close friend of my father. I told this all the time. In fact, when I first went to New York at 18, he took me into his office and he talked about my dad. And, and I always and I that was one of the one things I, I so never got to do that I so wanted to do. I just wanted to do it. I couldn't sing the Phantom. So it wasn't that. Um, yeah, I was I was dying to. That was that was a fun workshop. We didn't uh, I actually got a pilot after that and I didn't get to do the. It was supposed to go to Chicago or um, and I. I actually ended up doing the pilot in California, but it was, it was a great time. And about Daisy, I love too. She's a great director. Oh yeah. I mean, I've heard that from everybody. She and, she and Lonnie Price, who I've worked with three, three or four times now, Lonnie's yeah. like best friends with her. They've been best friends forever, right? Yes. And Lonnie and I did um, uh, Falsettos, Falsetto Land. I know. In fact, in yeah, fact, Julie and I—I I don't know if Julie, we didn't get any of those pictures, but Julie and I were talking about that. Yeah, you were, you were Trina, right? I was Trina for Falsetto Land with Chip Zion as Mendel and um, and Michael, Bert and Stephen Bogardus and all all of them, Danny and um, you know Heather and oh, just oh my God, what what a group! Oh, yes, so and the whole the whole lot of them were amazing people and it was like walking into wonderland because they all knew the falsettos sort of um 
the Bill Finn sort of mastery was all under that umbrella. And I was just like, okay, show me what to do. And I just followed suit. How they sang, they would sort of back phrase into the next beat. It was just sort of, it was a well-oiled kind of machine. And I, and Chip Zion turned to me one day and he goes, why aren't you saying something? And I go, I don't really need to. I think you guys have it all figured out. And I'm just, I know when to lay back and just follow. Yeah, they, I mean that's a. I mean, Faith, I'm gonna ask you something. Do you, do you, what do you think of New York and the theater now versus the '80s versus the '90s? What do you think of it now? Um, it is different. You know, I try not to. You know, and and we could really get into a huge discussion about it. Um, you know. I'm I'm not sure they're they're kind of making stars anymore the way that they mm -mm. did and I don't I don't know even what to attribute that to. I don't know if it's the way it's produced or how people come up through or producers are maybe scared to tie it to a couple of mainstream people. Right. Um but you know, I, I by nature am not a glass half empty girl. I'm mm -hmm. glass half full. Me too. Me too. I'm, I, a, I'm, a, I'm a glass too. half full girl too. Yeah, and I, <laughs> you good, wonderful. <laughs> um, but you know, I I think I I just go okay. This is the chess game. Play it. You know, whatever the field is, and mm -hmm. um, I. I try not to, I mean, if, if I could do something about it or contribute something um, like that, I would, I would do that. And who knows, maybe I will. Um, I mean, I've, I've gone on to do things I never thought I'd do, teach, direct, um, help write, um, things I really wanted to dabble in. And early teachers of mine said, you definitely have that ability. And I never saw it then. So um, who knows what will be? You That's know, right. nothing yeah. would make me happier to create something and put something out there that, you know, people would love and appreciate and you get well, to share with. Well, you like you, I found teaching about 14 years ago now. In fact, it led to it led to directing, it led to producing, it led to resident directing in Vegas for three years, led to artistic directing, which is where I am now. And I am. It's amazing. I'm in heaven. I know. Don't you just, you know, it's like incarnations, you know, re recreating yourself. I, I'm just, I'm big on that because I think you stay passionate and I wake up every day and I can't wait to see what comes my way. I love my students and, you know, honestly, my life is great. And when somebody says, hey, what about this? Then I have to carve out a space for it. And that's yeah. okay, too. Well, let's let's I want to talk about it because we share something that we both did in common. You taught a master class at Western Michigan University. Yes, with, recently. With, with with my really close friend. I did the same thing, you know, the next step, next step uh, Broadway thing. I did it yes. with, with their students. I taught with and, Jay. And okay. Jay Burko, who's one of my close, yes. close friends, he uh, he I also got to direct, he brought me back and I got to direct Jesus Christ Superstar which was amazing thing to work with those kids and they were fantastic. Oh, um, so talented. It's a great Jay, school. Jay great said team. to me, Jay, I called Jay and I said, I, tell me about he who's been a you know a teacher and a facilitator for, for years, over, over 20 years, right? No. He said that your master class was incredible. Wow. He thought, and so I want you to share some of what you do when you critique a student, to say for a musical theater audition. Well, I usually don't call it critiquing. Let's just start with that. Teaching. Um, yes. I, <laughs> I think I'm just there to share some thoughts and some techniques and things that have worked for me over the years, but also really be a good listener and take in the whole person because what I care about is that they're connected to their material. They have a deep connection to their own material as if they wrote it. Mm. And that can be in any facet. I mean, it could be something very different from yourself. It could be something that's an extension of yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but specificity has been my friend and sort of taking them through 
it's it's almost like an we're in an airplane looking down to see what the journey is going to be for the song what the arc is for the song. Mm -hmm. And I break it up usually into three acts, even if it's a cut. Mm. It's got to make sense, a beginning, middle, and an end. Okay, wait, wait, this is fascinating. I, I, I have to, okay. So, all right, let, let, can we take a song and just do this? Just, sure. Okay, uh, let's take, for like, so could, you, could we do this with Being Alive? Are you familiar, familiar with Being Alive? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, okay. that's one, um, Again, it's it's very well structured because, of course, it's Mr. Sondheim, right? Yes. Um, I I think, I mean, right off the bat, things that would red flag me. What do you think would be the trap of that song? To play it in any way, um, uh, 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 angst ridden or uh, 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 a trap. Um, I mean, to me, to me. It's, What's hard about that song to sing, do you think? Gosh, it's a great question. I wasn't prepared for it. Uh, That's okay. What is hard about that song to sing? It's a very vulnerable song. I mean, to me, especially the first part of it, it's a prayer. I mean, it's literally you're asking for this for it, it within the show now. It's very, right. it's, it, you're asking for it for the first time in your life. Right. First times are good. I always say that mm -hmm. this is the first time I've ever uttered this, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. that, that raises our stakes, which right. makes great musical theater. And I always say that, right? We're looking for the arc of the piece. For me, that piece, unless you really navigate through the tax of it, it can flatline pretty easily. Wow. That's the trap of it for me. So, and when you say flatline, it just dies. Well, you know, it's just after you hit a certain point, um, I mean, this is terrible, but I saw Frozen the other day and and it's it's hard with that role for Let It Go, Elsa, because once you once you hit that point in the first act, where do you go from that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking for places, and this is true of my characters, this is true of, of where you are in the song. You've got to go every other place, maybe, but vulnerability. Maybe that's the one thing that's at the end. Mm -hmm. So it could be a lot of, you know, being alive. Uh, somebody hold me too close. Somebody hold me. You, you've got to think of all the places you can go but vulnerability. Right, you know, right. That, that you're fighting for. Right, right. And sometimes it's just singing the big notes are going to flatline it. So you've got to find a way. I always say you've got to be like a lawyer in front of a jury. And and which way are we going to go first? Maybe, maybe we don't want to show our vulnerability at first. Mm -hmm. Maybe we think about all the things in a way that could not go well if we if we bonded with that person and had that deep relationship, maybe that's another place we could go. But then in the end, the fear is never having anybody. And maybe that's the worst place we can go. So you've got to really think about the tax and then you've got to play it as if it's the first time you've ever thought of it. Right. right. You're finding it, you're discovering it, right? I don't want a list that's never as engaging as finding it in the moment. Maybe somebody hold me too close. Maybe, you know, what it, fi finding, finding the places you want to go, you know? And so I take the kids through a monologue. I'm big on monologues Major because if we monologue it, then we can really get your point of view on it. And there was a young girl, um, wonderful girl who did the song from, uh, I don't want to be a show. I don't want to be a show off or something like that. From, yeah, from, from uh, Rousey 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 Chaperone. Mm -hmm. right? And that's a song that could flatline very easily because it's like once you get the tricks out, where do you go from there? And I said to her, I said, you know, I said you're doing this other number so great from. Um, um, oh no, I can't think of it. Uh, the um, I want to marry me. I want you to marry me from. Um, what is it? Gosh, I should know that. George, um, no, uh, not George Scans. Uh, I'll think of it. But she was doing a very soprano -y and kind of, you know, she was this beautiful little flittering, you know, soprano and everything. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at her and I go, don't, don't you get tired of being that girl? <laughs> 
And she said, boy, do I. <laughs> and I, I, said, said, I said that to my mom. I said that to my mom, Shirley Jones, all the time. Don't right. you get tired of being, being that, that girl? girl? And, you know, and she went, boy, do I. Yeah, her, yeah. her voice dropped like an octave, you know. <laughs> right. And, um, and I said, that's your show off. I don't want to show off. I don't want to be that girl. And I said, I really want to see that in you in this song. It's like, I could do this and I could do that and I could do the splits and I could sing the high notes, but I really just want to be heard and show you who the fuck I am. Mm -hmm. And we got that out of it and it was oh, so delicious. Oh. And she became this completely other person, you know? Well, you know, that's what you're talking about right now, that kind of specificity and what we were talking about earlier about that the stars are gone. I mean, if you go back to stars before you and I, if you go back, you know, to Carol Channing's and Robert Preston's and Dorothy Loudon's and these people that were original and they maybe they didn't have the high C at the end of the soliloquy in Les Miserables, whatever you want to say, but they weren't these cookie cutter people. They were individuals individuals that's that right. were stars that's right and that's point of view i mean that's why you have somebody like judy holiday she had a very specific point of view you know i mean that's why you had your mother that's why you had you know i mean we could go on and on and on and on gentleman's guide was the name of the uh -huh, song right. Right, jay, right, just, right. jay just texted me, <laughs> <told> me. <laughs> but um but it, it was these students were phenomenal, and I literally gave them two and a half hours of notes after they did the showcase, yeah. and they came back the next night. And oh my god, I couldn't believe what they picked up and implemented, and it had spe specificity. I mean, two kids did the 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 Charleston number, and I said to them, "Do you know what the Charleston was?" And they said, "What well, was the dance in the twenties?" And I went, it, "It was you were rebellious." If you did that dance, mm -hmm. I said, people had to shorten their skirts so that they could literally twist, you know, the legs and do that step. And I said, so when somebody said, won't you Charleston with me? I mean, it's like, won't you cross the line? Won't you be, won't you be bad? Wow. You know, won't you come on? Come on. It's a sexy number. And I said, so this isn't just a relationship. It's like, you want to do it? You want to go out back in Charleston? <laughs> I mean, it became this. Yeah, you know, sure I, mean, it could be real, I mean, I get chill bumps thinking about it because that puts a tone on instead of just, won't you Charleston with me? I mean, that's just nowhere. It's like, who are you? What are you saying? You know, how are you telling the story? And I said, wouldn't it be fun? I mean, if you just say to her, won't you, won't you Charleston with me? And she goes, yeah, I'll Charleston with you, you mm -hmm. know, and then it, now we're getting somewhere, you know, and we have somewhere to go so that by the end, when you're really, you know, just completely doing it, I mean. And yeah. those colors, those little colors. Yes. And then if you have like every kid now has can sing everything on the piano, every single note. But if you have those colors, then when you play those roles where you have those high notes and stuff. They actually mean something as opposed to I just hearing another high note. I'm just hearing exactly. another high note. I said, we, don't, we want no Parker and Barkers here. Parker, Barkers. No. Mm -hmm. Bark and Bark. No. Um, because it's not storytelling. No. And you, and you can be not the greatest singer, but if you're an amazing storyteller, people are drawn in, you know? And if you've got the notes on top of that and the chops on top of that, oh, my God. Right. You know, it's amazing because then you can use the right facility. I mean, listen, is my voice a beautiful voice? No, but it had character and it supported the all the, the, the character, the people that I played and had the colors, different colors that I needed to. It's like I always say, let's have a 64 crayon box, not an eight, you know, let's Let's pick those, you know, indigo and magenta and, you know, let's oh. let's be really specific. And when I go through and ask them questions like what day of the week is it? Where are you? Who are you sharing this with? What are they wearing? What are the color of their eyes? What mood are they in? It's a scene and it keeps it from being because we none of us just stand and ooh, you know, even me, I'm leaning into the camera. I'm, I'm going back and forth. You know, you have to be 
somewhat in your natural habitat. Where are you? Why this day? What yeah. time of day? Where is the light? You know, all those questions. And you can see it wash over them. And I always say, what's, what's behind your eyes? I'm going, as the audience, I'm going, oh my God. If you took all the colors from Joseph's coat, and I'm talking, uh, you know, ochre and azure, and, and you might add, add a little azure to that, you know? <laughs> when you say ochre. Yeah. Ochre. Um, sp is... Speaking of, that's amazing. You are, I want to take your class. Let's do it. I would, God, I'm not kidding. I would, I would die. I tell them the story how I got Adelaide, you know, was I did something wonderful from King and I as Miss Adelaide. Oh my God. I would love to have had And a Scott that. Frankel, who's, you know, he's a brilliant writer, but he, He's also a brilliant pianist. He he arranged it so they couldn't even tell what it was. Because, you know, usually he will not always say <laughs> what would, huh? You know, and I was like, he will not always say <laughs> what you would have him say. But now and then he'll say something wonderful. <laughs> You know, and you could see everybody going, what the hell is this? I know, I know this. It was just so out of context. But, and yes, those are risks, but risks worth taking. Yeah, they pay off. Terry Mann told me that he, when, that what got him Jekyll and Hyde was he saying, this is the moment to a Coca-Cola can that was sitting on the desk. And the, it became about the can and his <laughs> and fighting to get to the can. And it ended with him, Boom. <laughs> I believe, oh, I love him so much. I, I got to watch his audition one time up in the theater. I was up in the mezzanine. I came in early and they let me like hang out while he did his thing. And I think he played for himself on the piano or something. I was oh, just yeah. mesmerized. I love him, so him and Charlotte. Good in fact, man. Charlotte was in the room when I was having my son. Really? Yeah. Really? She was when you were yeah. giving birth? Yeah. I didn't realize you guys were that close. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, we were in Jerome Robbins and yeah. Lamb. I had been in Mary Ann's room when she had her son, Connor, and that was nine months before. And Mary Ann was supposed to be there, too. And she couldn't be there. And Charlotte goes, I'll be there. <laughs> she came on in. So oh, it was great. Good but, people. Yeah. They you, are good. Um, we, do, we do one other game on this show. And it's a very simple, it's funny. It's called You Become the Host. And it means you get to ask me just one, one question, anything you want to ask, and I have to tell the truth, maybe. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, as a child growing up in a musical family, what was your particular aha moment when you went, Patrick, to yourself, I got this. I, I can be part of this tribe. Oh, it's a great question. Um, it was late. And it was late after I'd been in the business. It was late because I was thrown, because when I made the choice to do it, it was out of kind of more, I think, not necessity, but like, oh, this is what is expected of me type thing. You know, I really wanted to play sports and do all that. And so the, for the first 10 years, I talk about this all the time, but the first 10 years of my career, and I made a very good living. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what I was doing. I was doing what I was told. And, but, and all the time I was learning and I was going to class and I was learning on the job and learning on my feet and learning from incredible, incredibly talented people. Kevin Klein was my first. Uh, but it wasn't until I got assassin. I got to originate a Stephen Sondheim show with those people, Victor Garber and Terry Mann and Deb Monk and all those people that I realized that was me. I got it. I, I add, I, I took my, I took whatever I had learned or whatever I had sort of put together over those 10 years prior and I put it into an audition and I then put it into the show and I went, Oh, I've arrived. I know what I'm doing. That must have felt really good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I greatest greatest theater experience of my life. And I've had great ones, great ones. But that 
You know, like I, I always say, I was locked in a room with Stephen Sondheim, Paul Gemignani, and the great pianist Paul Ford for weeks. <laughs> They are great, great people. Yeah, Paul Gimignani was in Jerome Robbins with us, and he's the one that came up to me and goes, you have the balls of God. <laughs> Look up to Jerome Robbins. Um, you, you, have, you have been amazing, Faith Prince. It is so good to see you. It is so good to talk to you. Well, I just think we should do something together someday. I, it'll be it'll be sooner than later. I will I will bring you here. If I bring you to to Tennessee, will you come on down? Oh yes, baby. I've got you know my people are in Chattanooga. Oh, it's the best. I love that city. I. I, my wife and I went there. I went, I went crazy. I said I could live there. If Franklin gets sick of me, I'm going to Chattanooga. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. great there. I've got people there and people in Columbia, South Carolina, you know. I mean, that's what at Monarch was a slow death. <laughs> we just, you know, it's like. Oh, is that, your, is that the series you were doing? Yeah, yeah. But it was fun playing. I mean, Honestly, I haven't gotten to play that many Southerners in my life, so it was really fun playing Nelly Cantrell. Then we're bringing, we have to bring you back to your roots. It was fun. Your Georgia roots. I would love um, it. Thank you for being here. You're thank awesome. Thank you for having I'm, me. I'm sending you so much love. Did you have fun? It's fun, right? Oh, my gosh. So incredible. And we even played two games. Yes, you did. And <laughs> I, got to, I got to hear you sing two songs. <laughs> Yes. I said I send so much love to you. I will be in touch. We will be in touch sooner than later. I'm not gonna. I'm Thank not gonna you. Thank you for having me. You're amazing. Thank you. Great love to your family. Bye, sweetheart. Lily, thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, amazing, Julie Garnier, come back here. We need to talk about that interview. Holy smokes, we threw it together. Faith Prince, you, she 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 did the technology wizardry, and, and thanks to your help. And what a great what a great chat. Mind blown. I mean, just the story about the Guys and Dolls audition. I'm yeah. uh, mind blown. And the, the what you guys did with the masterclass conversation, uh, I want to take that class. Sign me, me up. Sign mm -hmm. me up immediately. Uh, actually, Faith, I'm going to email you uh, <laughs> um, later because I'm going to be in Sacramento actually performing in the beginning of February. So we need to connect. And, um, and, and I would love to take your class at some point. Um, that makes uh, that makes two of us. That makes two of us. Yeah. She's, that I mean, yes, we never got. I got a I got a piece of a masterclass on being alive on the show. I mean, Hello. Uh, it's just incredible. I mean, just the conversation. I, I could talk about specificity for hours. Hours and hours and hours. It's one of my favorite things. And so like the question she was asking you about being alive, which I don't know if you know this, but I've been performing that pretty frequently these days. That's sort oh, of been really? Yeah, it was um, actually, do you know uh, Dwayne Poole? He's a wonderful writer. Oh, sure. and he wrote this Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Dwayne. Yeah. He, knows, he knows Glenn Cassell really well. There you go. So he wrote yeah, this yeah. beautiful tribute to Sondheim that we performed here in Los Angeles last year on Sondheim's birthday on March 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, and I was assigned being alive, which I was like, how am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, you know, <laughs> it's being alive. Um, and ever since that night, I'd, everyone keeps asking me to do it again. And I, I think there might be some bootlegs on YouTube. I'm not, I'm just saying, uh, oh, but it, yeah. I'm doing, we're doing it again in April because it's just become such a special night and such a, you know, everyone loves it so much. And we really do celebrate his entire career. Oh, um, I want to so. see Jules. I want to see. You got to come to LA. I know, I know. Or we could bring it to Franklin. We'll just bring it to Franklin. That's an idea too. Let's let's bring it yep. to Franklin. Um, we'll talk about let, it. Let me let me let's let me tell them what's going on. Uh, so Studio Ten guys, I want to show you what we have. So our first thing is the donation and audition drive. This is happening on January twenty first. It's this this uh, Saturday from three thirty to six thirty. I've got a bunch of people coming into audition, but they get to bring something. It's, you pick. You're going to pick two minutes of your best. You're going to audition with an instrument. You're going to sing. You're going to dance. But I want you to bring something because it's for the community child care center. Bring something, donation. You can bring Q-tips to donate. You can bring food. You baby can bring wipes. Anything. Baby wipes. Right. Perfect. 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 And then if you want to sing or just hang out, please come. And then after that, on, on Valentine's Day, we have got uh, Laura Osnes and Patrick Thomas coming back 
they, they, they sold out their first time there at the Harpeth Hotel from Franklin with Love. They are amazing together. Uh, they sound great. They tell great stories. Uh, it, it's going to be a lot of love and a lot of laughs and some great singing and some great music. And that's at the Harpeth Hotel on Valentine's Day. And then our big musical, it'll be our second big musical of the season, Smoke on the Mountain, is coming in April. And it's coming at, it was, it was um, built before the Civil War, the Franklin First United Methodist Church. We are going back in time and presenting this 1937, the Sandler family comes to some bluegrass and some gospel, and it's going to be an incredible, incredible show with an incredible Tennessee cast. Looking forward to it all. Uh, go to studio10.org, get your tickets for that, and then we've got the Dolly Parton show coming in May. Anyway, that's what we got going on at Studio 10. Julie Garnier, once again, bravo, bravo. You are amazing. Thank you. My Sorry. pleasure, my friend. Anytime. Looking forward to February. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much, Faith Prince. Mwah. <laughs>